Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today, we're going to be doing a 600-point Star Wars Armada list. I've been wanting to get more and more into the 600-point uh, mindset there's a lot of really interesting things if you're going by the sector fleet rules or just playing a regular, you know, uh, higher points game. Uh, that it, it, there's just doors that sort of open up when you when you sort of jump from 400 points up to the the larger formats. And while the standard game is only 400 points, I've always kind of felt like that. You know, you can't really field an armada at only 400 points. It's just it's just not really there. Sometimes there's some lists that you can get a high activation count, but it never really felt like what I thought an armada should really be. And then it didn't really feel like a fleet. At most, it sort of feels just like a small flotilla, just a small little battle group, uh, and not really an armada. And I thought, you know, it, it, you know, obviously if you go to like 2,000 points or like these ridiculously high uh, point limits, you can definitely get a massive, massive armada, but at the same time, you also have to play all day long to get that game done, right? So 600 points uh, opens enough doors that I feel like you can get a bigger fleet that feels a little bit more epic without really changing too much of the core game. And that's what we're going to be trying to do today. We're going to try to get that bigger fleet that feels more like a proper fleet. Uh, but at 600 point format, what's beautiful is I feel like things are still relatively balanced. I don't think that much really breaks. And your objectives, you know, your assault, defense, and navigation objectives still matter. You know, 20 points still matters at 600 points, whereas it matters a lot less at 2,000 points, right? Um, and so I feel like they're close enough to that balanced point level of 400-point uh, games that at 600 points they still have a, a lot of effect on the game and who, who's going to win and who's going to lose. So they're still, uh, they still matter quite a bit. So all of those things kind of uh, help to inform this video today. A uh, little admin stuff before we get into actually building the list. If you guys are new here to the channel, we are, uh, we're doing another giveaway. Uh, we do giveaways all the time. This one's for a $25 Amazon gift card. All you have to do to enter to win that is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Again, you can put those towards an expansion of your choice and uh, help, you know, help increase your fleets. Uh, by doing that. Also, uh, check out some of the links we have in the video description below. I'd love to have you join our Discord or uh, check out uh, Patreon. You know, there's an early access battle report live on uh, for A-Wing level patrons and above. Uh, and all they have to do, you know, you get early access to stuff like that. Plus other cool little Discord benefits and all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely check out all those links in the video description below if you are interested. Um, and with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this list. So I decided to go with the Republic today. Uh, one of the things, uh, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I've gotten so many Imperial and Rebel fleets flown uh, over the years because, well, those factions were out for a long time. And the Clone Wars just, I don't get enough playtime in. And I think the Republic is maybe my least favorite faction. So I wanted to start this year's 600-point fleets out with, with something from the Republic. And uh, also take advantage of the new Rapid Reinforcements Victory 1. And, uh, and sort of put a fleet together that might look a little bit more like a fleet you might see in the Clone Wars. And so I thought that that would be a fun thing to do here. Um, so we're going to uh, we're gonna add some fleets. Now, a cool thing about doing you know bigger than 400 points is that commanders that have fleet-wide abilities, as opposed to like commanders that only affect one ship, but commanders that have fleet-wide abilities become more powerful the larger the point limit you go. The more ships you have, you know, Admiral Akbar, for example, gives two extra red dice on the side arcs to all the ships if they're shooting that way. And well, if you got like 20 ships, all of a sudden that's like, four, you know, 40 extra red dice, right? Or maybe even 80 if they all have gunnery team and attack twice or something. So yeah, you, you becomes you know it becomes a force multiplier, and so uh, at 600 points you're not you're not you're not you know beating that into a point of abuse, but I wanted to be able to take advantage of it. Um, so I decided we'd start off, of course, with a Venator II. I'm going to have some squadrons in this build, although not too many. Uh, an interesting thing about Sector Fleet is that you don't have the ability to uh, run a full 33 percent. Uh, of your fleet there, so you're you're gonna have to uh, adjust things a little bit. Um, Twenty five percent, right? So it's still, but it's still a good amount. It's still a good amount of squadrons. Um, I'm not gonna totally max out on that. I just want a respectable screen 
of squadrons uh, for a 600 point format. And my thought was running six squadrons would, would totally work. Um, I like the idea of the Venator 2. It can activate five squadrons. If it has a token, it can do a sixth. Or, you know, if I happen to... If I happen to lose one, which will definitely happen over a long game, it lose at least one, I, I still get a lot of value out of this guy. And so many times I end up running these guys and I end up running the Sfat T or the Sfat cannons on them and not really, you know, running a Venator to truly activate squadrons. I want to really take advantage of that squadron capability that the Venator 2 has. So uh, so for my for my commander, um, there's a couple of potential force multipliers in here, some that are a little bit better, some that are not. I thought I would go with Tarkin. Tarkin works for a lot of different things, and I'm going to have a lot of different things going on in this list. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm going to go a little upgrade heavy in this list, a little bit upgrade heavy. Uh, and so I could obviously run less upgrades and have more ships, which is definitely a great idea for larger games. But in this case, I'm going to go a little upgrade heavy, and, and, and I'll try to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so I mentioned this was going to be a carrier. I'm going to go ahead and add my squadrons now because this is going to be my primary carrier. The rest of my fleet isn't going to be focused on activating squadrons. So this is going to be the one guy who's going to be focused on that. Um, what we're going to do here is uh, I'm not going to run any uniques, even though the Jedi are cool. I'll save that for a different list. Uh, I'm going to run just a standard workhorse of basic Republic squadrons. Maybe this will be an easier build for new players to get into. I'm going to run V-19 Torrents. By the way, I'm using Ryan Kingston's Fleet Builder today to help uh, put this all together. If you haven't checked out Ryan Kingston's Fleet Builder, I'll put a link down in the video description below. Uh, and I'm going to run six V-19 Torrents. Uh, they're an all-around, well-rounded, good squadron. They have five hull each. They're speed three. They have escort, which won't matter in this case because they're you're not protecting anybody because they're all escorts. Uh, but they have swarm, which gives them a reroll when they're attacking other squadrons if they're also engaged by someone else. Which means if you get at least two of these together, then you know that second one is going to be able to get, and everyone thereafter will get some rerolls, which is nice. Now you've got two blue and a red, and uh, of course if we. Uh, do some other things, we can even enhance that. But against ships, they also have a black die, which is really cool. Now, unlike the X-Wings, which is the mainstay squadron for the uh, for the, for the the uh, Rebels, uh, the V-19s are, you know, they're, they're pretty good against a lot of targets. They don't have Bomber, but they have that black die, which is just going to give them a pretty good chance to roll hits against the ship. You got like six out of eight uh, chances to roll a, a hit result there. So black dice are pretty reliable, even if you don't have Bomber. So I, I really like the V-19 Torrent. Uh, that red dies has the potential of doing four uh, damage. You know, if you roll two hits and then a, a double on the red, so you can you can get up to four damage on their basic attack. But we can uh, we can push this even harder. <clears throat> so what I want to do on the uh, on the flagship here is I want to do some great stuff. Uh, first thing I wanted to add is of course electronic countermeasures. We got to protect our venator uh, and use that defensive retrofit to protect our brace. That is a very important upgrade to take there. Uh, I want to put flight commanders. On this one, um, I think since this is my most important uh, carrier, my only real carrier that I'm going to build, I don't want to risk it being out of range. Um, so I want to have flexibility on when I do a navigation command. Again, Tarkin is going to give me a lots of extra stuff, so I can always dial in some. Uh, you know, I have six different commands I can kind of put on Tarkin to say, do I want to give everybody a token, or do I want to give myself an extra dial? I love that flexibility, and it's going to definitely work with this fleet. Now, um, Flight Commander lets me do my Squadron Command after I move, if I want. So I can do it either before or after I move. Uh, so if I'm in range now, but I'm afraid I'm going to move out of range, I can do, uh, I can have some choices. Or if the squadrons are too far ahead of me, I can catch up to them. And all that's going to work really well because we'll put Flight Controllers on here. They'll get an extra blue die when I activate them. So this will be just about all of my V-19s, just about every single round. Well, I'll have an extra blue die, which is going to be golden. Really, really nice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and also give this one boosted comms, so now that range is up to long range. Now, Flight Commander plus boosted comms might be overkill for a lot of games, but not for every game, and especially if I want to keep my flagship safe. And in a 600-point format, there's even more potential enemy ships that could all bring their guns to bear on my flagship. So keeping it safe is even higher priority at larger point games, and that's why I'm taking all these measures to ensure that I'll be able to activate squadrons from a safe distance without uh, without kind of screwing myself over. <clears throat> That's kind of what I'm looking for there. 
Now, um, for offensive capability outside of just the squadrons, I'm just going to put one more upgrade on here. I'm going to put the linked turbo laser towers. It is just an all around great upgrade. It's going to help with your salvos. It's going to help with your all of your battery armament. And of course, you can um, activate it uh, on your first squadron attack if you want to just have some extra dice on a single squadron, which is really nice when there's like an ace bomber or something like that that's trying to throw extra dice at you. It's just one of the best upgrades in the game. And uh, really, really nice on a ship that's got red dice almost everywhere. So very, very cool. And that's about all we're going to put on the flagship right now. Now to uh, to kind of make this fleet feel a little bit more like a fleet, I'm going to add a second Venator. Well, this one will be a Venator 1. Uh, the Venator 1 here is going to be more of a gunship, not going to be as focused on activating squadrons. This one is our, our squadron, our flagship, our safe ship. This one's going to be the unsafe ship that wants to get up close and personal. First off, it's got the black dice in its armament to justify getting up, up close and personal, but uh, we're going to give it even more beautiful things to make it as super devastating. Uh, one of the things I'm going to put on is the Sfat Cannon. Of course, uh, it's a great... Great way. It reduces your squadron capability, but gives you that awesome extra attack. Five blue dice and one black die. And you can pretty much do that at just over long range if you place your uh, ignition, your targeting token, uh, just right. And of course, you can also launch that out the side and then potentially double arc somebody with a front attack and a side attack. If, they, if you can make that work, you're going to be in a very happy place. Uh, but I want to make this even deadlier. Uh, I will go ahead and give it the Assault Proton Torpedoes. For the Turbo Laser, since I have a lot of black and blue dice here, I'm going to give it XI-7s. So, my X, uh, I said, so you can only redirect one. That's especially good for black dice, because even if you don't get that critical, you probably still have a lot of damage showing. And uh, it, you know, Or if you get like a single accuracy, you can put it towards a brace, and you don't have to worry about stopping the redirect capabilities of the ship. I like XI-7, especially with ships that can do a lot of black dice potential. Uh, I'm going to give my fleet, since I have a Venator 1 here, and the Venator 2 doesn't have the fleet command, I'm going to give my fleet intensify firepower. I, I definitely want my ships to be able to shoot, and especially with the Venator 1 that only has like the two reds, there are going to be times where I'm making you know a double arc shot, but I only, it's at maybe at long range, and I only have two red each time. Intensify fire really helps mitigate a bad red dice, and you can do that on every shot, which is super groovy. Uh, so I love intensify firepower for that. And by the way, we've got two different upgrades on this ship that both can take advantage of a concentrate fire token, which does tell you a little bit about my strategy with Admiral Tarkin. Tarkin hands out tokens to your fleet. We're gonna probably put quite a few concentrate fire tokens on Admiral Tarkin here. Um, maybe all concentrate fire tokens, maybe a little bit of maybe a little bit of flexibility. Maybe a nav in engineering and four concentrate fires. That might work. It's where you have you have some, you know, some emergency response uh, options. You might even make one as a squadron, so you'll have an emergency squadron dial you can pull for yourself in case you get slicer tools or whatever. And you're gonna make these decisions at the beginning. Uh, of the game because you're going to see what your opponent's fleet is. If your opponent has things equipped to mess with your dials, if they have boarding teams that can change your dials, if they have uh, you know slicer tools and things like that, then maybe that will influence how you build Tarkin out with these tokens you select for him at the beginning of the game. So the Venator 1 here is not done, though. This is going to be my probably my most heavily upgraded ship. Uh, we're going to have so much on this guy. Uh, first off, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and... Well, not first off. I'm right in the middle. <laughs> Let's keep going. I'm going to put the clone gunners on here. Uh, if we're doing a concentrate fire command, a lot of concentrate fire stuff. Again, if you followed me for a while, you know concentrate fire is my favorite command. It's not always the best command. Navigation is considered to be by many the best command in the game. But... When push comes to shove, and when shoot comes, when you know, when bullet comes to armor, bullet, you know, uh, I don't know, laser blast comes to armor. Con concentrate fire is definitely my favorite. I love getting extra dice in combat, and that's that's a way to do it. It's one of the best ways to do it. <laughs> but we'll put the clone gunners on there. It's going to let you spend a concentrate fire token from another ship to add a blue die set to an accuracy. In our front arc here, we've got three red and three black. 
we're not going to have any blue dice. We're going to have a very low chance of getting accuracies. Clone Gunner is the perfect way to ensure that that front shot has an accuracy to stop the brace or helps you stop a flotilla from hitting that scatter button, right? So very, very potentially powerful card. And normally it's kind of hard to trigger it because you have to have somebody else close by and they have to have a Concentrate Fire token. But since you've got Tarkin, everybody's going to have tokens, right? And that's the beauty of Clone Gunners with Tarkin. I love that synergy. Um, and last but not least, we're going to put Clone Captain Zack on here. Well, maybe not last, because we got a title we can do too. Um, Clone Captain Zack here is going to help us specifically when we get this fat cannon firing out the side arc. We are now going to really... Uh, we, we, we can spend Concentrate Fire Tokens to ready him, but he also gets one uh, of his own as well. So we can add a die uh, that's already in our attack pool. Which, the beauty of this one is that, you know, if we're doing it on these fat shot, again, those ignition attacks have to happen first, uh, but we can we can make sure that we add an extra black die. So now we're looking at five blue and two black. If we concentrated fire on this shot, which we'll probably spend on our first shot, um, then we can add a third black, which, again, really, really cool. Uh, I'm just a big fan of a lot of these upgrades. I also want to put uh, a title on this one, and I'm going to go with the triumphant title. Uh, although Resolute would certainly work, I like Triumphant in this case because of how safe I want to keep the flagship. Uh, I, I talked already about why I want to keep the ship safe and keep it in the back. Maybe my squadrons spread out a little bit too far, and now I can have this ship that wants to be up close and personal. I can have all of these V-19s you know, being pushed out farther and farther, and it just sort of extends that bubble of influence that the, the flagship has. And uh, it allows me to really keep the flagship safe and really to put this Venator right in my opponent's face and let and let him kind of carry those commands to the squadrons if they're close or medium range of, of the Venator 1 Triumphant. Very great title for what this list is trying to do. Now, in a 400-point list, I'd be almost done. I'd be almost done with just two big ships. And I never thought that two big ships felt like a fleet. I thought we always needed a lot more than that. I always wanted ships of different sizes and different makeups and models. And, uh, you know, I don't mind two of a certain type of ship. In the case of the Venators, they were so prominent in the Clone Wars and the show, I don't mind having two of them. It's also cool that they're two different variants because that gives us, uh, gives me an opportunity to use maybe my red one and then my regular traditionally painted one as well. So I got some cool options there. Let's go ahead and add some different size ships. Let's add the Acclimator. Uh, I like the Acclimators. They make for great carriers, but I'm going to build one out as a gunship. Like I said, I was only going to have the one carrier. I like the Acclimator 2 uh, more as a gunship because it has more dice. It's got an extra die in that front arc. It's got that extra blue die. And we can really turn the Acclimator 2 into a potent gunship. I really love what it's capable of doing. Let's get this thing going. All right, so first off, uh, the Acclimator 2 loves swivel mount batteries. One of the reasons it likes this is because it now has a, a pretty good long-range shot with three blue, and now it gets to add a die that's on the side. It gets to add that black die. So now you've got three red and a black at long range, and if you concentrate fire, now it's a second black, right? So very cool stuff to do at long range. I really like that. Uh, we're going to put a couple of other things on this one. We're going to put Assault Protons. Since we can get that Black Dice at any range, Black Dice crits are going to be super valuable on this ship. And I love that. Uh, we are also going to... We're going to put some other things on here. Uh, I'm going to put the Chart Officer on this ship. Uh, this is... It, it's, it's, a, it's a cheaper upgrade, but the points a lot that I've planned for this fleet allow for it. And that's just going to help you if you... Uh, you know, the medium ships can sometimes hit obstacles. Uh, this ship can go speed 3. You might find your deployment needs you to uh, kind of ram into an obstacle in order to get into that ideal position. And this is just lets you that, that one-time pass where it's like, you know what? I, I can just deploy wherever I want. I don't have to worry about my lack of mobility because hey, the Acclimator does have a lack of mobility, right? They've only got one click of yaw. Chart Officer helps overcome that, and then it means that I can do, like, maybe a nav first turn and then save my Concentrate Fires after that. So I like that. Uh, if you're going to Concentrate Fires, we're going to throw the Gunnery team on this one. He's got a great front arc, and ooh, he's allowing, this is going to allow us to fire like crazy out of that front arc, Concentrate Fire on the first shot, and then have another shot out of the front arc. That's really, really golden. And uh, since this one will also probably want to get up close and personal, probably starting out at speed three and s eventually slowing down, uh, I'm going to give this one thermal shields. Uh, that'll be really helpful against other black dice attacks that come back at us. And that is also super cool. 
All right, so that's the acclimator. Uh, I'm going to add a victory. I talked about adding a victory. Uh, we're at 453. Couldn't run this fleet at 400, but now I can add a lot more ships. Uh, we're going to add a victory here, victory two. Uh, I love the victory two here. It does have, of course, the support team uh, that the Imperial victory doesn't have. So this is going to allow me to take engine techs and make up for its lack of speed, which means it will have to have some navigation. I can dial in those navigation commands at the beginning until I get close enough to really make this ship punish my opponent, and that's what I want to do. Now, since the victory is a Star Destroyer, uh, I'm allowed to put the Sfat Cannon on this one as well, and uh, use it very similarly, kind of like a cross between the Acclimator's powerful front arc and the Venator's side Sfat shot, although the Venator actually has the same kind of front arc, but... Uh, but this one is like a medium ship like the Acclimator, so it's a little bit of the hybrid, kind of the best of both worlds there. And, uh, and so I still, I still enjoy it. But what makes the victory really cool here is that it's got double ordnance. And of course, we're going to be able to get some really good shots, uh, whether it's from the SPAT or once we finally get close enough with that engine tech. Uh, what I'm going to put here is I'm going to put external racks for the real big, big shot. And of course, assault proton torpedo is one of my favorite upgrades. And uh, I also want to put ordnance experts on this Ship ordnance experts is just for the black dice rerolls. Always very very useful on black die rolling ships, and that is that is the victory. <clears throat> on this one, I don't want to have gunnery team like the acclimator not firing a spat, so uh, you know I kind of need the gunnery team. But on these other ones, like the spat's gonna probably come out the side. You know I don't I don't want to fire twice at the same mark, especially with black dice. That'd only be three red. I'd rather do the spat out the side and then also follow up with a front arc shot. That's that's the ticket. Um, so we've got a pretty, you know, a, a growing fleet here. We've got two large ships and two medium ships. We're going to add one more ship, and this one's just going to be a, uh, a C-70, Charger C-70 right here. Uh, that's going to bring us up to 600 points. That's the point limit. I don't really have to put any upgrades on the C-70. You certainly could if you wanted to, but I don't think this ship needs it uh, because we're going to have Intensify Firepower running. Intensify firepower, every every time I'm firing at a ship, I can change a die to a hit. That's going to be great insurance uh, against the, the C-70 rolling two red for just about all of its attacks, especially if it has a double arc. I can roll two red uh, out the side. If one of them is blank, I just change it. I can roll two red and a blue out the front, and if one of those is blank, I can just change it. So, you know, you, you'd have to roll two blanks, and your chances of doing that are, are kind of slim. So the Charger C-70 is going to pr probably put out some very reliable damage in this build. And uh, and I like it. I like it. Plus, um, you know, it, it's got a uh, it's got a black die against against uh, ships or against squadrons. So, you know, you've got you've got some options there. You definitely do. All right. Let's go ahead and and, and get things going. Um, we've got we've got a couple of uh, objectives we can put in. Um, I like the surprise attack. Surprise attack is nasty. Uh, we've got the uh, surprise attack coming in. That's going to let uh, you know let you catch your opponent's flagship out, out of position and then give them some raid tokens, which is always nasty. I like fire lanes always. It's going to tell me where the battle is going to take place and let me uh, sort of pick the engagement since I've got some ships that care about their direction, where they're approaching from, and where they're shooting with the multiple SFAT cannons. That's going to be helpful for me and. Uh, you know, an oldie but a goodie. I've been a fan of dangerous territory for a while here. It's going to allow me, my ships, to ignore obstacles. When you've got more ships, um, you find you have sometimes a little bit less maneuvering room. Now, still a 3 by 6 play field like Armada, you're probably not going to have that much of a problem. But this is a little more insurance against that. It means that I don't have to worry about ramming on uh, asteroids. And, and uh, you know, and then I do have to chart officer in case people don't pick dangerous territory. But... You know, people usually don't pick dangerous territory. A lot of people will pick fire lanes on this one because at least they know where the fire uh, firefight is going to take place and allows them to position in a certain way as well. But uh, I feel like this is a fun fleet that's doing a lot of different things. I've got my fleet commands, or rather my squadron commands going out out of, out of Tarkin on the flagship. I've got the fleet support or fleet command uh, that's happening from the Venator, plus heavy firepower on this guy, heavy firepower on the Acclimator, heavy firepower on the Victory, although these both require kind of getting up close and personal. I've got the Charger that can stay at a distance, and I've got the squadrons to like kind of cover me for incoming squadron fire, as well as uh, maybe to pepper the shields of another 
big ship before the black dice from my my main body firing group kind of come in. But this is, just feels like a more robust fleet and uh, and something that I could feel more uh, like more thematic for these big glorious engagements that you see in uh, in Star Wars. So I just I really like this idea of a fleet, and you can have you know it's not it's but it's not so big that it's going to take all day long. But I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know and share some of your 600 point ideas with me. And uh, and also in the Discord, we have a fleet building section down there that you can come in and uh, kind of compare notes with some other folks. Uh, and if you want to see a fleet very similar to this in a battle report, maybe uh, stay tuned. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out Patreon. By the way, big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing and help make this all possible. I will talk to you later. I want to thank you all so much. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes, and cowabunga! Always wash your socks! <laughs>